The following programme is made possible by the friends and partners of Creation Today. Welcome to the Creation Today show. I am Ben Shetler. I am with Eric Hoven. Do not cross this very dangerous line. If you do, you will learn the truth about Islam. And I promise you, once you cross it, you can never, ever go back. New York Times bestselling author, documentarian Joel Richardson is on the show today. And a second interview with Fouad Masri, an expert on Islam and author of over 14 books. Do you want to know the truth about Islam? Ooh, enter if you dare. Welcome to the Creation Today Show, where we bring together interviews with experts and solid Bible teaching. Your hosts affirm the ultimate authority of God's Word, the truth of creation, and why it matters to you. Apologetics is not just about proving a God, it's about talking about and proving the God of the Bible. That's what Real Apologetics is all about. Yes, Eric, because if you believe that there is a God, but do not believe that that God is Jesus and he has not died and risen again for your sins, then your destination is the same as any atheist because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except through me. Very true. Usually on the show today, we, or usually on the show, we talk about humanism, atheism, agnosticism, and give defense and teach you how to defend your faith and that. Today, we're going to be talking about a religion that can be extremely dangerous and it's held by about 1.6 billion people in the world today. Eric, we're talking about the religion of Islam and what the holy book of Islam, the Quran, says. We're going to get into some details and we're going to begin with Bill Maher. Bill Maher, the Bill Maher. Christophobic, anti-religious bigot who pretty much hates anything to do with religion actually said something about Islam that I got to tell you, I don't think many Americans are aware of it. I, and, and the news media is certainly not going to talk they about this. They refuse to talk about it. Listen to this. There are illiberal beliefs that are held by vast numbers of Muslim people that I don't think... A vast number of Christians, too. No, no, that's not true. Not true. Vast numbers of Christians do not believe that if you leave the Christian religion, you should be killed for it. Vast numbers of Christians do not treat women as second-class citizens. Vast numbers of Christians no, I agree with that. do Everything not just believe said. that if you draw a picture of Jesus Christ, you should get killed for it. Um, so yes, does ISIS do Khmer Rouge-like activities where they just kill people indiscriminately who aren't just like them? Yes. And would most Muslim people in the world do that or condone that? No. no. But most Muslim people in the world do condone violence just for what you, you think. That? Eric, I never thought I would be saying this, but Bill Maher is absolutely correct. He is. The religion of Islam uh, possesses at its very core the idea of violence. The interview there, Bill Maher goes on to reference a Pew poll, and this is interesting because he's talking about the way Muslims think. And Eric, in Egypt today, 82% of Muslims believe that if you commit adultery, you should be murdered. Wow. Over 60% believe that if you convert from Christianity to Islam, that you should be, or from Islam to Christianity, yeah. excuse me, you should be killed. That's a huge majority, and we're talking about a relatively developed country. You know, it's interesting. If you want to look up those statistics on your own, go to creationtoday.org and do a search for the truth about Islam. This brings up the dichotomy that, that uh, we'll call it signs versus bombs. I mean, when you look at what so-called extreme Christians do, uh, like let's take the Westboro Baptist, for example. And qualifier. Okay. They're not Christian, <laughs> they're not a church, they're not Baptist. They call themselves Baptist, the yeah. Westboro wow. probably doesn't even want them. So this is an aberration, but they try to associate. Yeah, Christianity is, teaches, even though they don't, Christianity teaches about God's love. Right. And the reason we love others is because God first but loved us. But signs versus bombs. Signs versus bombs. Here you have, what, what do the Westboro Baptists do? They might go to a funeral and hold up a sign or yell at people about what they think. Which is despicable. It is. That's, that's, we, I, I at a funeral, that. my goodness. Yeah. But compare that to what the Islam extremists are doing. Yeah, these people, even the Westboro Baptist Church is not blowing people up. They're, they're not doing these acts of terror. Yeah. And so we have signs versus bombs. I also think it's interesting to comment, Eric, that 
you have extremist and fundamentalist. And the extremist and the fundamentalist are one in the same inside the religion of Islam. If you believe the fundamentalist fundamentals mm. of Islam, you then will become an extremist. <laughs> Whereas if you believe the fundamentals of Christianity or the orthodoxy of Christianity, you will be someone that loves. And I think that's something that has been, we, we've been duped, so to speak, into believing that, well, the extreme Christians, no, no, the fundamentals are the fundamentals. So that's a great point. So we have the whole of what Islam is, is uh, thinking about. Bill Morris mentioned this. Yes. We have the research. But Eric, what are the professors what are the sheiks, what are the uh, imams, the leaders of this religion saying? Is, it, is there a disconnect or are they saying the same thing? And so I did some research. I went to the oldest Muslim university in the world, started back in 988 AD. Wow, over a thousand Al, or so. Al-Zahar, I always get it wrong, Al-Zahar, it's in Cairo, Egypt. Sunni Muslims consider this to be the premier Muslim seminary. Okay. So we have a professor, the professor of Islam or uh, Quranic interpretation. Jihad and killing are the head of Islam. Wow. If you take them out, you cut off the head of Islam, and then he was. So it's the head. Yeah. Jihad. Killing is, jihad. Yeah. Killing jihad. Uh, there is a whole surah that's also a chapter. There's a whole surah called Spoils of War. There is no surah called Peace. Wow. Ask and this is a head. Ask me the guy's name. Ben, what's the guy's name? Well, thanks for asking. You're welcome. <laughs> His name is Omar Abdel Rahman. Who is Omar that guy? Abdel <laughs> Rahman? Uh, well, when I tell you, you're not going to laugh. This is the guy that masterminded the first attack on the World Trade Towers. This is a professor at the premier Muslim seminary in the world, and you think of the equivalency oh, here, wow. this would be like a professor at Wheaton or Fuller or the largest evangelical school in the world, Liberty University, going and planning an attack on another nation. Oh. The core, clearly, what is being taught in Islam, the teachers of it, are teaching violence. So you're not talking about equating this to the Westboro Baptist, you're talking about you know, not the goat herders of Islam. You're talking about their professors that study this. Okay, so we've looked at what the general population believes. We've looked at what their seminary professors believe. What does their holy book say, Eric? And that's, Let's go to the source. Yeah, and when we come back, we will look at what the Quran says about violence and jihad. Is this really a religion of peace? Watch our HD videos on Vimeo. Vimeo.com slash creation today. Welcome back to the Creation Today show. We are looking at what the Quran says about violence. And Eric, I don't know about you, but I don't want some professor or the consensus defining the truth for Christianity. I go to the Bible. The Bible. Let's go straight to the book. And, yeah. and I feel like we should do the same for Muslims. Let's do that. What does their book say? And Surah. We, we begin. Yeah, sorry. Surah, chapter 4, verse 89. If they turn away, and the context here is talking about people leaving Islam and going to another religion, if they turn away, seize them and kill them wherever you find them, and take not from among them any ally or helper. Seize them and kill them seems pretty clear to me. And this is not taken out of context either. This is not like the Old Testament when they went to war. This is literally, if they leave Islam, here's what you do. Seize them, kill them. Surah 47.4. So when you meet those who disbelieve, strike their necks until when you have inflicted slaughter upon them, then secure their bonds and either confer favor afterwards or ransom them until the war lays down its burdens. Unbelievable. This is exactly what the excuse was or what the reasoning was in Britain when the gentlemen were killing people in Britain and then put it on camera, why they were doing it. That verse goes on to say, that is the command. And if Allah had willed, he could have taken vengeance upon them himself. But he ordered armed struggle to test some of you by means of others. And those who are killed in the cause of Allah, never will he waste their deeds. Surah 47.4. Allah is a sovereign God. He's capable of killing these people himself. Why jihad? Here's the answer for jihad to test you. Wow. It's a test of your faith, killing other people. To see if you people. really do that. Surah 923, O you who have believed, do not take your fathers or your brothers as allies if they have preferred disbelief 
over belief. And whoever does so among you, then it is those who are the wrongdoers. Definitely not the teaching of the Bible, which says, love your enemies. The contrast here is incredible. If you want to learn more, and by the way, I was on a show recently where the guy said, those, that doesn't exist. The Quran does not say to do that. Yeah. I was blown away. Yeah, and there's so many people saying this, this isn't Doesn't true. Happen. Islam is a religion of peace, and, <sighs> and we mentioned this before. Here's the problem. Either Christianity is at its core hateful and violent, and Islam is, because we have to make everything equal. So either Islam and Christianity are both, both violent, or Islam and Christianity are both peaceful. <laughs> when and the it's truth just is the neither one. And, and the truth is, is Islam is, is not peaceful. It is hate your enemies, yeah. kill, kill the infidels, or you have Christianity, which says do good to those that despitefully use you. If you want a full list of these verses, I encourage you to go to creationstoday.org, use the search feature, and type in verses in the Quran about violence. You'll be shocked at what you read there. So, Eric... What? What do we do as Christians? <laughs> oh no, what am I going to do? Well, this is, we got to answer this question. What is the Christian response? Because we're dealing with this more and more today. To a religion that wants to kill you simply not because you don't believe in its religion. Uh, do we just turn the other cheek? Do we cross our fingers and cross. hope that their bomb doesn't go off? I mean, <laughs> cross your fingers. That's what good... is our response to terrorism? Well, we're glad you've watched the Creation Today show because we have some answers for you. Number one answer, Eric, I believe is love. The Bible teaches that Absolutely. we should love our enemies. Which we've got to love others. That's what God did to us and that's what we do to others. You know, thinking about it, the second thing is, okay, the Bible does say turn the other cheek, but it doesn't mean turn the other cheek to this kind of terrorism. When somebody's trying to kill you, the Bible does not teach, yeah, just go ahead and let them do it. Hey, tell them where your family's at too. It actually says you can defend yourself. That's actually, husbands, that's your job to defend your family and to do that. So uh, we're, we're not, if we value human life, we will defend human life. That's good. And there's a difference between planning an attack on somebody who's not trying to kill you and defending yourself. Recently, Phil Robertson was taken out of context when he said you need to convert them or kill them. But he said, in this case, you need to convert them or kill them. In this case is if they're trying to kill you, then those are your only two choices. Yeah, that's all there is. And you're so right. There's a huge difference between going, hmm, everyone that disagrees with me, I'm going to plan to kill them and yeah. going, these people are planning to kill me. I have to defend myself. Yeah. Um, Eric, we need to understand that terrorists have no concept or desire to fight fair. This is a story from Kibbutz Ha'on in Israel. It's in the northern part of the Sea of Galilee. I've been there many times. I'm jealous. <laughs> in the, this is right near the Golan Heights. And there was a time where the, uh, the Lebanese and the Jordanese controlled the Golan. And there would be terrorists that would go up on the hill. And they'd be snipers that would shoot down on farmers that were driving their tractors. Not the military, the, just the, the people. Yeah, they, they're shooting down on farmers. And so what these farmers would do is they'd put up pieces of metal plates so they wouldn't get shot as they're driving through. Keep doing their farming. And this is what was said to the UN. They said, oh, look at the Israelis. They are fortifying their tractors. They're basically building tanks. You know, they're built, <laughs> fortifying themselves. They were trying to protect themselves exactly. from being shot. And, and this is the type of thing that's going on over there in Israel. They're not fighting fair, and we need to be aware of that. You know, anybody who says Islam is a religion of peace is either lying or they are very misinformed and don't even know how to use Google to Google this because at its root, it, it's what we've been talking about, it is not a religion of peace. Christianity, Judaism is a religion of peace. Islam is not, like we were saying earlier, you can't put the two together and say, well, it's all equal. No, it's not all equal. And Eric, we need to display strength, not weakness. Uh, don't start taking your shirt off right now. It's not <laughs> <laughs> Strength, not weakness. It's going to be hard for me to do. Uh, right. Benjamin Netanyahu, former mm. Israeli prime minister and fantastic name, Benjamin. Oh, yeah, Benjamin. Uh, <laughs> here's what he says uh, in his book, Fighting Terrorism. Indeed, after an interlude of several years in which the vigil against terrorism was relaxed, new forces of domestic and international terror have emerged which see their ultimate destiny as leading to a final confrontation with the great Satan who is the United States. Wow. And Eric, I believe right now what we're seeing, some of the problems with ISIS have are a result of relaxed foreign pro policy. We need to be strong. 
not only do we, do we need to be strong and not fear terror, we need to be wise. There are actually humanitarian aids that are being set up as fronts for terrorism. It's actually been shown now that uh, the tunnels that they built under the border to send soldiers up into and go commit acts, acts of terror in Israel. In Gaza. Yeah. In, in Gaza. Those tunnels were actually, the money uh, to build those tunnels was raised by humanitarian aid. We've got to be careful who we're giving our money Unbelievable. to. Unbelievable. Um, and, and, so, and that money was way, intended to go to good people, and, and yet it was used, used to help. In, instead used to kill. By the way, none of the funds or donations given to Creation Today for the Creation Today show are used to support <laughs> terrorism or build tunnels, just so you know. A very productive and safe place to <laughs> donate, and we appreciate your support. Um, we can't make it without people That's giving, true. This is and true. we won't give to terror. So <laughs> not gonna do a it. safe place to give. Eric, we need to trust in the Lord. And no, as, as I've been in Israel many times, my grandparents live over there or have lived over there. Um, the attitude in the Middle East, and specifically from Israelis about terror, is different. Americans are we're so afraid right. we don't trust God, um, but but they believe that if you are afraid of terrorists, then the terrorists have won. That's their attitude. You terrorists, can't be a terrorist if nobody's terrorized. Terrorists, terrorists, on, terrorism only works if you're afraid, and so their <laughs> attitude is we refuse to be afraid. One of, one of the interesting anecdotes is bus lines in Jerusalem were being targeted with bombs. Bus line number 18 in Jerusalem was targeted multiple times. There were people all over Israel traveling to Jerusalem just to ride bus line 18. Why? Because they wanted to tell terrorists, you bring your bombs. You we are not afraid. We're not afraid. And I'm riding bus line 18. To be, I don't think most Americans would do that. And yet the Bible says, trust in God. It, and Have that's faith. what it comes down to. Have faith. And the beauty of Christianity is it actually gives true faith. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ who wants to bring about love, not hatred. Ultimately, we need to love, and that's the most important thing. When we come back, New York Times bestselling author Joel Richardson. Follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash creation today. Welcome back to the Creation Today show where we are talking about the truth of Christianity versus Islam today. And we have with us a New York Times bestselling author, a lecturer, a teacher, and the uh, the he's head, gonna be a producer now. Yeah, uh, the producer doing a movie of a new documentary called End Times Eyewitness that will be coming out in two weeks. Um, Joel Richardson is on the show with us. Thank you so much for being with us, Joel. Thanks so much for having me on. All right, so you're an expert and you write about these things. I got a question right off the bat: Are God and Allah the same? Yeah, that's a good question. First of all, I, I always like to qualify this by saying that if you talk to any Arab throughout the Middle East, someone who speaks Arabic, they're going to say that Allah and God are the same word. Uh, so I always qualify it by saying, is the Allah of Islam and the God of the Bible the same? And the answer is no. Ah. They're really worlds apart. Uh, in essence, if I can be extremely politically incorrect, I would say the God of the Bible is the creator of heaven and earth. The lowercase God of the Quran is really a deceptive, uh, evil spirit that seduced a man named Muhammad. And, you know, when you go back to the, the very foundations of Islam, it's clear that this being uh, is, is certainly not the God of creation, not the God of the Bible. Wow. And you studied that. Okay. So the difference then between uh, Jesus, because we, our goal is to to take people in our apologetics, that's what we're talking about, that's what we do. Our goal is to take people to the cross of Christ. Well, then how in the world do you do that? I mean, how do they see Jesus? You know, what, what really is the difference there between Jesus and Islam? Sure, the Jesus of Islam, the Jesus of the Quran. Muslims will affirm that Jesus was born of a virgin. They'll affirm that he uh, was Jewish, uh, he was a prophet. Really, they just view him as one in a long line of prophets. Uh, they, they will say that he uh, was able to uh, carry out some miracles. But when it comes to all of the essential doctrines of the historical Christian faith, when we're talking about the divine incarnation of God in Christ, talking about him dying on the cross, Islam fundamentally 
absolutely denies these things. They say oh. he never did die on a cross, and therefore he was never resurrected, never raised from the dead. So there are some similarities. There are some very critical differences as well. Wow. All right. You got to ask about the book then, because I'm, I'm really curious about this. This fantastic book right here, uh, The Islamic Antichrist. Can you, uh, and I really recommend that you go and purchase it, can you tell us a little bit about where you're going with this? And I know it's, try, it's difficult to summarize such a large book in <laughs> such a short time. Sure. Well, if I, could, uh, if I could zoom in, I could show you some of the books behind me. I've got probably 50 different books written by Muslim, Muslim scholars on the issue of the end times. So in Islamic Antichrist, what I tried to do is lay out the basic story of what Muslims expect with regard to the end of the age, and I compare that with what the Bible says. And I show that in many ways, their primary Messiah figure, known as the Mehdi, he bears many striking resemblances to the Antichrist of the Bible. And so I'm trying to make this information available on a popular level so the average Christian doesn't have to read 50 uh, <laughs> yeah. books written by Muslims on the end times. So now this is fascinating to me because this isn't something that most Christians know. It's not something that most Christians talk about. It's not something that I, I, would, I dare say most Christians wouldn't even believe it when you say that. Can you give us some details? Can you go into a little snapshot of this? Sure. Well, I mean, you know, it's amazing because most Christians don't know about this, but yet this information is driving much of what we're seeing in the Middle East right now. Uh, but with, with regard to Islam's primary Messiah figure, they call him the Mehdi. In Iran, you'll frequently hear the term the 12th Imam. They call him the 12th Imam. Yeah. Uh, he is an individual that comes at the end of the age. They believe that he will cause Islam to become supreme throughout most of the world. He'll cause Islam to be exalted. Uh, he's an individual that will rule the world from Jerusalem. They said that he'll rule specifically for a period of seven years. Uh, and he'll have an assistant that they believe is a man that we call Jesus Christ. They call him wow. Isa al-Masih. And so they believe that Jesus comes back as a Muslim and tells all the Christians of the world that we've had it wrong all along, our Bible's corrupted, that Jesus, he'll say that he was a Muslim when he was here on the earth, wow. and all Christians need to become a Muslim and follow the Mehdi. <laughs> yeah, down to seven, a seven-year reign. When you said that striking resemblance, that, that's a striking resemblance right there. Right, right. Wow. Yeah, and you know, I recently just interviewed uh, Sheikh Akrima Said Sabri. He's the president of Islamic Quranic uh, Studies at Al-Quds University in Jerusalem, son of the former Grand Mufti. And, you know, I have him articulating and explaining all of these things just so that people don't think, uh, you know, I'm just some Christian making this up. I get it really right from the, uh, the horse's mouth. Is that in End Times Eyewitness? That interview? Yeah, that's actually part uh, part of that will be in a film. I've actually got uh, a film coming out in a few weeks here, End Times Eyewitness, and then another part to that documentary later next year. Oh, that's going to be amazing. I know you're doing it in partnership with WorldNet Daily. Okay, uh, Joel, if you don't mind, we've got to go here, but can you stick around for an extended interview? You betcha. Okay, we'll make that interview also available right here at creationtoday.org. Uh, so we'll be back with, uh, with the rest of the show. Go to creationtoday.org for that extended interview. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash creation today. Welcome back to the Creation Today show. We're discussing militant Islam and contrasting it with Christianity today. Uh, on the program, we actually have a wonderful opportunity to interview Fuad Masri. He is the author of over 14 books reaching out to Muslims and books that are training Christians on how to connect with Muslims. One of his most recent books is Connecting with Muslims. Awesome, and uh, Fouad also has has taught over Eric over eighteen thousand people. If anybody knows, he should. Given them instruction, <laughs> and we get to hear some instruction from him. He's also originally was born, raised in Beirut, Lebanon, and Fouad, we're excited to have you on the show, um, the Crescent Project. Tell us about that. I know that's the bulk of your ministry. Thank you for inviting me. It's great to be with you. Uh, Crescent Project exists to share the hope with Muslims. We believe that we have a hope. His name is Jesus, Amen. and we want to share him with Muslims. And the way we do this is we lock arms with local body of believers. We want the Christians to cross the street before they cross the ocean. 
Mm. Do cross the street, do cross the ocean, but build bridges with Muslims. Mm -hmm. So our goal is to lock arms with the church, equip the church, equip believers, provide them with tools to build bridges with Muslims. Many people today want to build walls, but mm -hmm. Jesus says we need to build bridges. That's Amen to that. Well, you just wrote the book, Connecting with Muslims. You're obviously the expert after growing up over there. Can you, can you give us some insights? The book is on the screen. People can see they can get it right there at Crescent Project. Give us some insights on connecting with Muslims. Yeah, thank you. I mean, this is part of my experience that I'm sharing in the book. Connecting with Muslims has two parts. The first part is witnessing like Jesus. What can we learn from Jesus? He's our master. What can we learn from him? How to speak with a Muslim? And then the second part is questions that Muslims ask. Most common questions that Muslims ask and how to respond to them in a loving way and to share, uh, to share about the good news of Jesus. Now, one of the best things that I can share with our viewers that really freed me up is that I need to show the love of Jesus. Christ said, blessed are the peacemakers. So we want to be peacemakers and build bridges, not because we agree with everybody. That's not peacemaking. Peacemaking many times is bringing two disagreement to one common uh, denominator. So my goal as a believer, when I meet a Muslim, is to build bridges, build on the common things so they can cross over to Jesus. There are major differences. Anybody who thinks Islam and Christianity are the same, they are not. The way they view God is not the same. The way they view jihad is not the same. The way they view uh, salvation is not the same. Even prayer or fasting. You and I fast because it's a sign of commitment to our prayer time. In Islam, you fast to show God that you've done a good work, that you attain salvation later. So yes, there are differences, but the first thing we need to know is we want to build walls. The second thing that I think is very important for our audience is we need to have compassion. Today, everybody is hateful. When you watch ISIS, when you watch Al-Qaeda, when, when you watch the news on the Boston bombing and September 11, these are acts of hate. And Jesus says we must have compassion. So my challenge for myself, for my church, for the community, is we need to show love and compassion. Regardless if we agree on politics or theology, we need to show compassion. That's you, true. that's great stuff. On your website, it says that you're not interested in converting Muslims. And I think a lot of our viewers would say, well, we're yeah. interested in converting <laughs> Muslims. I think Eric and I, before we read that, would say we're interested in that. What do you mean by that? Yeah, thank you. That's a very good point. I think maybe it's a second language, English. What we are saying in that website <laughs> is that is that you and I don't convert anybody. Right. No, nobody converted me. Nobody converted you. It's the Holy Spirit that converted you. So you and I, one of the biggest hurdles in the Christian faith today is we think that when people get saved with us, then we were successful. That's not the case. You and I, our job is to share, to be an ambassador. Thank you for watching the Creation Today Show. Learn more at creationtoday.org. Do you need the tools to defend your faith? Visit our websites for up-to-date content. Attend one of our live events. And shop online at creationstore.org. We are Creation Today.